Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Engineering at Home Challenge. This week we're going to be looking at encryption. Encryption is the method of taking a message or a piece of information and turning it into a code so that people who aren't supposed to can't access that information or that message. So when you take something in plain text, something that people can read and have access to, and then you turn it into a code or something secret that people won't understand unless they know how to solve it, that's called encryption. Then if you take that code and you turn it back into something readable, that's called decryption. So encryption is turning it into a code, decryption is turning it back. And we're going to be looking today at three different methods that you can encrypt a message to make it secret. So the first method we're going to be looking at today is using invisible ink. So we're going to be looking at how you can make a message invisible so people won't even know it's there unless they know how to look for it. And to do this, to make invisible ink, all we're going to need is some lemon juice, something to write with, so that could be a cotton bud or a paintbrush or anything else you want to use, and some paper to write on. And then to find out what your secret message says, you're going to need an iron. Make sure you have adult supervision for this part. So you want to take your lemon juice and pour it into an egg cup or a bowl, and then take your writing tool. I'm just going to use cotton buds for this one. Dip it in, make sure you soak up lots of lemon juice and then simply write your message out on a piece of paper. Make sure you use plenty of lemon juice for this one as you need quite a lot for it to come out. Then you want to wait for it to dry. It will take quite a while to dry but make sure you let it dry completely before you start to try and reveal it. So once that's dried you're going to end up with something that looks just like a plain piece of paper. Then with adult supervision we're going to use the iron to heat up the paper and as it gets hotter the lemon juice will heat up and reveal the message. So the second method of encryption we're going to look at today is something called a basic substitution cipher. The basic substitution cipher works by taking the alphabet, A to Z, and changing each letter by replacing it with something else. So it might be a number, it might be a picture, an image, or it might be a dot and a dash like in Morse code. So the method I'm going to be using today, I'm just going to be using numbers. So I'm going to write out the alphabet, A to Z, and then I'm going to number these letters 1 to 26. So A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, and so on. Once each letter has a number assigned to it, we can then write out our message using the numbers instead of the letters. And then if someone sees that message, they're just going to see a string of random numbers that they're not going to understand unless they know how to solve it. If you want to make a more complex code, you can change the way you assign the numbers. Try using a different sequence and as you can see, the more complex it is, the more difficult it is to identify the message. So if you want to have a go at a few different substitution ciphers, have a look in the handout, there's a few different activities you can work through in there. And then try and come up with your own substitution cipher. Be as creative as you want, be as secretive as you want. So you might want to do something inspired by the Egyptian hieroglyphics where you choose pictures that represent each letter, or you might want to do something completely different. Now the third method of encryption we're going to look at is something called a Caesar cipher. So a Caesar cipher is another type of substitution cipher, but instead of replacing the letters with numbers like we did earlier, you actually replace the letters with other letters. So how this works is if you write out your alphabet and then write another alphabet underneath that and shift it along, you'll see each letter is now represented by a different letter. And a really easy method of encrypting and decrypting Caesar ciphers is using something called a Caesar wheel. So here's one that we use on our STEM events. And what you can see here is you have an alphabet on an outer circle and then an alphabet in the middle as well. And what you want to do is take the outer A and the inner A and you want to just line those up like that. Now with the Caesar cipher you also need something called a shift key. And that's the number of times you move the inner alphabet to get a new code. So you can have lots of different possibilities with Caesar ciphers all depending on how many times you've shifted the inner alphabet. For the example today, I'm just going to use a shift key of 5. So we want to line up the A's and then I'm going to move the alphabet 5 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now you can see A is V, B is W, C is X and so on. So we now have a new code to use. What we're going to do is you're going to take whichever word your message you want to be encrypting and you want to find the letters on the outer alphabet and then the inner alphabet is going to be the letter on the message. So the outer alphabet is the plain text and the inner alphabet is the cipher. So let's say we want to encrypt the word hello. We want to find the H on the outer alphabet 
move in and you've got C. So the cipher letter is C, but the plain text is H. Then we find the E, Z, L, G, and there's a second L, so two Gs, and then O there, J. So it's C, Z, G, G, J. And that's hello in this Caesar cipher with a shift key of five. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can make your own Caesar wheel. This, is, this template is available as a download. If you have access to a printer and you'd like to print one of these out, feel free to do that. Um, but what it's made up of is just two circles that are um, fastened together. So you can see this one uses a paper fastener. If you don't have one of those, that's absolutely fine. You could use a paper clip or an earring or anything else to stick the two pieces of card together, but they can still spin round. So for this one, what you're gonna need is just some cardboard, some felt tips to write the alphabet out, and some scissors to cut them out. And you might want some circular objects to trace the circles out as well. And then I use paper clips to join my discs together. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna trace a large circle. And then I'm gonna cut this out. Then you want to write the alphabet out evenly spaced all the way along the outside of the disc. If you want, you can use felt tips to make this a bit clearer and more colorful. Then figure out how much space is left inside the alphabet. And then I'm gonna trace on another piece of card, a smaller circle, and then I'm gonna cut that out. And then I've got these two circular discs, one much larger than the other one. And then I'm gonna put the smaller disc inside that and write the alphabet out underneath with the letters all lining up with the outer alphabet. Next, make a mark in the center of each disc. Make sure you find the center accurately so the discs line up. I didn't do this and mine was a bit wonky as you'll see later. Then use a paper clip to poke a hole through each disc. And then you can join them together using the paper clip or an earring or a paper fastener. It's completely up to you. You should then have your own Caesar wheel that you can use to write your own codes and send secret messages. So now you know how to encrypt a message using invisible ink, a basic substitution cipher, and a Caesar cipher. And why not try a combination? So take a Caesar cipher and write it, write your message in invisible ink. So if you're interested in encryption, have a look on the handout. There's a few additional resources on there that you can use to find out more about how encryption works and where it's used. I hope you guys enjoyed the challenge this week. We'd love to know how you get on, so please do share with us on social media. And tune in next Wednesday for the next challenge.